Hello everyone, I'm William France. There's a pretty good chance that no one's gonna watch this video because it's gonna get lost in the sea of other videos debating the same topic. Today we're answering one question, PC versus Mac for video editing. So to be clear, this is not about PC versus Mac overall. This video is specifically based around choosing the right platform for editing video. I'd also like to be very clear, I use all platforms. I'm actually using a MacBook right now to read my notes. While I have my PC behind me, I also have a Linux server that I use for my home media. So as a computer scientist and an overall avid computer enthusiast, I can say that I'm making this video from an unbiased approach. Every platform has its advantages and disadvantages. All right, so let's jump into it. Spoiler alert, PCs are better for editing video. Thanks for watching you guys, we'll see you next time. Just kidding. Um, videos are typically very large and very heavy files. Whether you're editing in 1080 or 4K, video files are processing intensive and it's gonna require significant hardware to manipulate these files. The Adobe Cloud Suite is pretty consistent across most platforms. So to advance our analysis, we're gonna move software slightly out of the conversation because we're using the same software suite across both platforms. What we really wanna focus on is working on a platform that gives us plenty of space. And when I say space, I literally mean all possible interpretations. Let's start screen real estate. Behind me, I have two 28 inch 4K monitors that are being driven by an eight gigabyte video card. So when we're talking space, having the ability to open files, browse, see your timeline and extended view, also look at your preview screens, all of this is possible because I have these two large monitors that I can easily power from my PC. Another interpretation of the word space is hard drive space, disk space. So I have four terabytes of disk space in this PC. One of those terabytes is pure solid state. The other terabytes are in RAID 1, which gives me extreme redundancy for the files that I have on my computer. If you've been through one catastrophic hard drive failure, you'll know why I have a RAID 1 setup. On my MacBook Pro, on the other hand, I have a 512 gigabyte SSD. It's wicked fast, but I'm constantly evaluating if I need to keep files on it or take them off, and I'm always thinking about this upper limit that I have when it comes to disk space. Again, that glass ceiling of reaching the constraints of the system is in your mind when you're working on the Mac platform. So finally, processing and memory. My PC here has a five gigahertz water-cooled overclocked quad-core Core i7 with 32 gigs of the fastest DDR4 RAM. My MacBook also has a quad-core with 16 gigs of RAM because 32 was not available when I configured this computer. A lot of you are probably saying, but you're comparing a desktop PC to a laptop. That is very true, but all of Apple's products across the board have the same characteristics. The hardware is specifically designed for the Apple device. That works to Apple's advantage when it comes to their hardware and software integration. It works against Apple when it comes to the relevance and the future proofing of their products. We are usually a step behind the current generation of what's possible to put into a desktop PC. I also want to be really clear this is not an Apple hate video. As I mentioned, I have a MacBook Pro, I've had iPhones for 10 years, Apple makes phenomenal products. This is specifically deciding what's the best tool for a particular job. So now that we've made it through that discussion, take everything I just said and throw it in the dumpster because I have a totally different opinion when it comes to editing photos. That's the subject of a future video, we'll see you guys later.